Good morning, dear colleagues. My name is Oyuna Durzigushayeva. I am an associate professor at the East Siberia State University of Technology and Management, and today I would like to tell you about Tibetan medicine as anthropic ecology. Tibetan medicine is a unique system of healing which was formed from accumulation and improvement of the experience of Chinese, ancient Indian and Arab medicine, as well as traditional methods of healing of Tibet itself. It developed as a medical system in the 5th-8th centuries with the spread of Buddhism and its adaptation to the realities of Tibet. Tibetan medicine went through the path of mastering and mixing these medical systems in Tibetan culture. The researchers note that Tibetan medicine also played an important role in the spread of Buddhism. The idea of interrelationship of all phenomena and things in the material world is the basic in Tibetan medicine. That is why, using the knowledge about these relationships, you can heal people's diseases. It should be noted that indivisibility of subject and object, man and nature, matter and spirit, is one of the main ideas of Buddhist philosophy in general. Buddhists view the world and man as a dynamic psychophysical integrity. The essence and direction of this dynamic psychophysical integrity, which is called continuity, santana, sets the principle of absolute impermanence, anityata. The man is a part of nature, and therefore he is influenced by all the forces of heaven and earth, space, the movement of luminaries, the change of day and night, seasons, climate and landscape, mountains, water, earth, plants and animals. Tibetan medicine considers everything that surrounds a person as a possible cure or source of danger, depending on the dose, relevance, season, age, and other factors. It treats a person as a balanced, holistic system, perceiving health as harmony of all spheres of his or her life. Today, traditional Tibetan medicine is used not only in Tibet, but also in many Buddhist countries, and in recent decades it has become popular in Europe and North America. In China, of which Tibet has been a part since 1958, Tibetan medicine is taught as a discipline at universities in the regions with Tibetan enclaves. Tibetan medicine came to Russia from Tibet and Mongolia in the 18th century and is popular in the Buddhist republics of Russia. Tibetan medicine is known primarily for its special methods of diagnosing and treating diseases. Great importance is attached to lifestyle correction, special diets and recommendations for maintaining, maintaining mental and physical health. Tibetan medicine is gaining particular importance now during the COVID-19 pandemic. During the pandemic, the population of the Buddhist republics of Russia widely used Tibetan antiviral compounds as a prophylaxis and support to drugs. The article aims to overview the atlas of Tibetan medicine, the Tibetan medical paintings to the four volumes of Tibetan medicine Juchi, the four tantras, and their commentary Vaiduria on Bo, the blue beryl. The atlas of Tibetan medicine, kept in the funds of the National Museum of the Republic of Buryatia, Russia, is of high religious, historical and methodological value. It is a full copy of the Tibetan original of the 17th century. 76 paintings illustrations contain drawings and that visually reveal the content of Tibetan medicine, theory and foundations of clinical medicine, treatment methods, information about the ethics of a doctor, training of medical personnel, and so on. Each painting is numbered from 1 to 77. The 62nd plate is missing. Each plate of the Atlas of Tibetan Medicine has a different number of images between 90 to 274, and the full set consists of about 10,000 drawings painted in strikingly beautiful colors. The Atlas 
was brought to Transbaikalia at the end of the 19th century from a Tibetan medical monastery for students and healers of the medical school at the Tsugolsky Datsan Buddhist temple. Since 1936, it has been kept in the museum in Ulan-Ude, the capital of the Republic of Buryatia, Russia. It is not only an important object of heritage, but also a teaching material on Tibetan medicine. The formulation of Tibetan medicine dates back to the 8th century, when the translator Vairachana and Yutokpa the Elder translated the medicine textbook Jutshi for Tantras from Sanskrit into Tibetan. Four centuries later, reincarnated Yutokpa the Elder, Yutokpa the Younger, reworked Jutshi, adapting it to the conditions of Tibet. Yumjana Jabon, a scholar of Tibetan medicine, considers Yutokpa the Younger as the actual author of Jutshi because in the edition of Yutokpa the Younger, it appears not as a mix of heterogeneous fragments, excerpts, interpolations, not as a compilation, but as a conceptually holistic, organic source that turned into a strike strictly canonized Tibetan medical text. The special geographical position of Tibet made it possible to combine the methods of Indian and Chinese medicine with the medical knowledge of the Tibetans. In Vaiduria Onbo treatise, a commentary to Jutshi, written in the 17th century, its author, monk scholar Desi Sangye Gyatso, regent of the 5th Dalai Lama, sought to link the centuries-old cultural heritage of India and Tibet with Buddhist teachings about the world order, the content and purpose of human existence. The Atlas of Tibetan Medicine contains advice on the norms of behavior of a healthy person, following which one can ensure his or her well-being and long life. Its origins lie in the vast empirical experience of nomadic people who survived in extreme conditions. Treatment of a disease in Tibetan medicine began with correcting diet and lifestyle, and only then drugs and medical procedures were added. On the 20th plate that you can see on your screen, we first see the types of undesirable lifestyles, which include committing sins in body, speech and mind, taking risks, for example getting into an unreliable boat, or riding a horse with a bad temper, traveling to places where people are robbed and killed, climbing on rocks and treetops. Further on, there are tips on the importance of good sleeping conditions for health. It is noted that daytime sleep is only allowed for weakened and elderly people. For healthy adults, daytime sleep is contra contraindicated. On the same page, we see recommendations for a regular sex life and warning that if you do not follow this, then the senses weaken and painful phenomena occur, leading to premature death. Further, it is said about the usefulness of ablutions, which strengthen the body, improve the appearance of the skin, and improve digestion and general tone. Instructions of moral and ethical behavior, which can favorably affect the preservation of health, includes the following. So a person should be impartial, keep his word firmly, turn away from bad deeds, speak deliberately, do not take everything for on faith, honor elders, take care of loved ones, live in harmony with relatives, friends, neighbors, and other necessary people, diligently do his job, do not humiliate the lower, and do not envy the higher, do not rely on bad people. The Atlas of Tibetan Medicine contains detailed nutritional instructions. The 21st sheet provides a detailed analysis of food products, their typology, characteristics and effects on the human body. It is pointed out that overeating, malnutrition, unhealthy diet give rise to disease and shorten life. A Tibetan medical doctor 
Act in accordance with Buddhist ethics, compassion and mercy for all living beings. Tibetan medicine defines a healthy person as a person in whom three principles, principles are balanced, pleasant, neuma and bile. Modern Tibetan doctors prefer to call them mucus, wind and bile. Wind is responsible for the nervous system, mucus is responsible for the lymphatic and endocrine systems and bile is responsible for digestive system. If due to an unfavorable conditions or improper lifestyle, an imbalance of these principles arises, then the person becomes ill. The doctor must recognize the causes of disease and treat patient using various treatment reg regimens. The Atlas of Tibetan Medicine indicates four types of treatment, that is lifestyle, proper nutrition, medicines, healing procedures such as moxibustion, bloodletting and bath. In the Atlas of Tibetan Medicine, these four treatments are represented as four trunks of a tree. On the fourth sheet of the Atlas of Tibetan Medicine, we see a tree of remedies, which schematically depicts all types of treatment. For example, the trunk of therapeutic nutrition has six branches, in which nutritional recommendations are grouped according to the nature of the imbalance of the three principles. The trunk of lifestyle has three branches in accordance to the three principles. The trunk of medicine has the largest number of branches, 15, divided by tastes and their nature. The medicines are aimed also to prevent side effects. What's more, they are prepared not only to treat one disease, but to restore the health of the whole organism. In other words, when compiling a mixture, it is taken into account that the medicine should cure the disease and restore the entire body. It should not have harmful side effects and have a prolonged prophylactic effect. Cleansing procedures such as enema, lavage and emesis are also located on the medication trunk. The trunk of medical procedures, which has three branches, includes mass massage, including heat, bloodletting, compresses, and moxibustion. The ecological purity growing area is of great importance for plants intended for the production of medicines. The Atlas of Tibetan Medicine indicates that plants for preparing medicines must grow in the right place. For example, plants with cool characteristics must grow on the north side. Plants with warm characteristics must grow in the sun on the south and dry side. It is desirable that medicinal plants grow in places inaccessible to people or animals. They must grow in a clean and spacious place, free from any damage, must have good appearance, color, taste, strong roots, and be harvested at the right time. Roots and stems are harvested in late fall, when they begin to dry out and wilt. Leaves and plants, plant sap, are collected in summer, when in full bloom. Flowers and stamens are collected in late summer. Fruits and seeds are harvested in mid-autumn. Rind and resin are good for harvesting in spring, when the plants are full of sap. Usually, Tibetan medicine doctors control all stages of preparation of medicines, from collecting to mixing. Thus, we can say that Tibetan medicine is an example of traditional anthropic ecology. Taking into account the integrity and interdependence of the world, healers propose to restore the lost ecological balance between the world and man. Studying the Atlas of Tibetan Medicine, we see how important the ecological state of nature is for the health of a person, for the production of medicines, and maintaining, maintaining a healthy lifestyle in general. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.